I'm Lori and I am here at the Bees Knees Pottery today. We're working on an advanced clay project. It is a dragonfly lantern. I'm so glad you're here and I'm anxious to show you how to do it. Okay, we are working with clay today and this is a kit that you can order right down below. There's a link that will take you there. You'll receive everything that you need for your project. You will have the clay. You'll have some workspace. And I am first going to show you um, how to roll your clay out. Have a um, plastic roller and roll it out to make it all one thickness. We have two different sized lanterns that we're making today. And so we have two different containers that we're using. Um, this one, you just need one piece of clay. And the larger one, you're going to need two pieces. So what we're going to do is show you how to put two pieces of clay together. So to do that, we're going to take our toothpicks and score, that means scratch, score your pieces that are going to be put together. Score both of them. And this is just really rough. Um, and this is because we have to fit the pieces into your kit. So we're going to do some water, both sides, and then press, overlap and press them together. If you're doing the smaller lantern, you don't have to do this. Now this is going to be a little wet, so this is where two pieces of plastic come in handy. You're going to take your roller and roll right over that. You don't want the clay to stick to your roller. I'm rolling it together. I'm rolling right over that seam that we overlapped with the scoring. Pick it up, and there my two pieces are now together. For the two sizes, you will have patterns in your kit. Um, one pattern will just be a paper towel. And the paper towel is a square, so we're going to fold it in half and it fits exactly where we want it on the container that we're using for support. This is now your pattern and you'll lay it down so you know your clay has to be this big to fit around your container. Um, if you're doing the larger, more advanced, then you want to make sure your clay is big enough to fit it. So you can see right now our clay is not big enough, so we have to roll it out a little bit more to make it larger. So we're rolling it, and right now one side is thicker than the other, so I'm going to concentrate on this side. You see how I'm starting in the middle and rolling out away. You can see the clay coming right out the end my cover so you can see that it's moving. Now to tell how thick it is to make sure your thickness is the same all over, I actually take a toothpick. You have several toothpicks here. I take a toothpick and I put it down into my clay and I measure with my finger how thick it is. And then I come to another location and make sure it's the same. This one's thicker still, so then I would take and roll it out a little bit more and make sure it's all the same thickness. Some people like to stand up and roll just to get a little more um, weight behind the rolling to move the clay. So let's see what we have now. I'm just going to take a few areas and see if we're the same thickness. That's the same. 
it's all pretty much the same thickness right now, so that means that I'm ready to go ahead and cut my pattern out. Um, I, after I'm done rolling, I would like to take my one of the big tongue depressors and actually press down. I'm aligning all the molecules in the clay to go in the same direction. It makes your clay a little bit sturdier, a little easier to handle, better for firing. I'm compressing it as I go along. taking my pattern. I'm just going to make the, um, the small size today. The larger one, I'm going to put aside right now. It's the same technique from here on out. It's just going to be a little bit easier for you to see what I'm doing making this small one. So I'm taking that piece of paper towel that we folded and I'm just going to cut around it. Taking a toothpick again. Just rudimentary tools. We don't need anything fancy. And this is just serving as my pattern. I'm going to pick it up, cut it, and take all the extra off. Take the extra and put it inside of the extra plastic to keep it nice and wet until we're ready to use the extra. Set it aside. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take what I was using as my pattern and actually wrap it right around my container. This is going to create a barrier so that I can pull the container out without it sticking to my clay. So there is tape for you in your kit, and we're just going to put it right, a couple of pieces, just going to put a couple of pieces, just however it will hold this together for you. There you go. Just holding it in place. We have um, two other paste pieces for something we're doing later. So these two extra pieces come into play later. All right. What I'm going to do is take my clay, just get it off the plastic first. I'm going to take my clay, and my clay is nice and soft and it's easy to work with right now. If yours is not, go ahead and just, you have a spray bottle of water, just spray your clay, let it sit for a couple minutes, and it, the water will absorb into your clay and it'll be easier to work with. Okay, so what we're doing is we have these two pieces coming together creating a seam. Now remember how we added the clay earlier when we needed to make it longer? Same thing here. We're going to score, which is just, as you can see, a bunch of little scratches that roughs up the clay. We're going to do that on both sides. Adding your water. The water is making slip. Slip is liquid clay. We're going to put these together. We're going to press them. See how I'm pressing them together. And remember when I measured my clay, you can see my clay is all the same thickness now and is going together nice and neatly. I'm blending those two pieces together. Pressing them and blending them. Now I'm going to take my stick again. And just smooth that right out. Take a sponge with a little bit of water, wring it out, and smooth, smooth your seam. You can't even tell it was there. Now you can see my thickness of my clay all the way around. You can see how even it is. 
Now, yeah, I've been doing this for a few years, so I can kind of tell as I'm going along. If you're having if you're having an issue, then what you need to do is take all the sticks that are in your kit. We have three sticks. We have the big one and two small ones. If you lay that right next to your clay, and I'll show you when I do the bottom here. If you lay that right next to your clay, you'll be able to tell if your thickness is right. So now I'm going to do the bottom. I'm taking that extra clay that we had, and, and I'll show you. You can put your sticks right next to it, and can you see how I can see how thick that clay is. I can put it all around. I can see if my clay is thick enough for me. Okay, so that, that's a measuring tool. All right. So we have our, I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit. We have our extra clay. And to get the bottom, what I'm going to do is just take my container with my clay wrapped around it and sit it right on top of my clay. And I'm taking the toothpick and I'm just cutting with the toothpick all the way around. Now I want you to be careful. Sometimes the toothpicks break. That's why there are a lot of them in your kit. Um, just go straight up and down. You don't want to go crooked like this. You'll be undercutting. You want to go straight up and down when you're cutting. Okay. Now, if you need to, just turn your whole plastic and you're going to cut all the way around. This is the exact size of the bottom of your container. And then cut it out and take away the extra clay again. Okay, so what we have is our container is holding the shape for us. It's supporting it. So I see how I can pick it up without too much problem. We can take this right off, and I'm going to do scoring again. So I just scratch it up, make sure that paper's out of the way. Do the same thing on the bottom of my, the circle that I'm using to fill in the bottom. Doesn't have to be pretty. Making my slip with the water. Both sides, sides that are going together. Okay, then I'm taking this and slipping it right back on that container up there out of your way and I'm pressing this on should fit perfectly because you cut around it and now I'm doing that blending seam that we did before we're gonna make this seam disappear okay I'm just taking my finger rubbing it let's rub that together and make it disappear Okay, I've gone all the way around. I want to make sure that's really tight on there. Just keep blending it. When you think you've done all the blending that you can do with your fingers, we're going to take that tongue depressor and come around and smooth it and blend it more. Okay, so we're just going to blend it. nice and smooth. The 
And then we're going to take the sponge again, dip it in the water, wring it completely out. We don't want it too wet. Just want it, we're damp sanding. Think of it as that because it's actually somewhat like sandpaper for this next step. Smoothing it. I'm just going to kind of go up and smooth the whole thing just to get all those little dents and fingernail marks, whatever's in there. Smooth that all out. Now my bottom is a little uneven, but you know that's okay because this is what we're going to do. Bam. We're just going to gently press that bottom and it's going to be nice and flat for you. Okay, so now we are just checking it over again just to make sure it's nice and smooth. Check all of our edges. And the next thing we're going to do is work on our pattern. Um, there is another pattern that we're going to use to actually do the grass around the outside that the dragonflies are going to be flying around. So we have some measuring we need to do. The first measurement we're going to take is the stick, um, the tongue depressor, the larger one. And I'm just going to take it and use it as a measuring device. I'm going to press and it's making a little line. I'm bringing it up from the bottom and it's just giving me an end indentation as to where I need to stop. I can't, I don't want to go any further down in my cutting when I cut out between the blades of grass. So I'm just measuring, just roughly measuring, just giving me an eyeball of where to stop for my design. Okay. For the top, I'm going to do the same thing. First, I'm going to check that it's nice and even. And then I'm going to mark it just the same way. I'm going to take the smaller popsicle stick and I'm going to start marking. It's just making a small indentation. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's a gentle indentation around the top. It's helping me with my spacing. All the way around, just like that. You can barely see it. Okay, so now that I've done that, I know where my pattern is going to fit in between. And I have um, sat down and looked at that space. So I just took another paper towel that will be in your kit. And the first thing I did was mark off I'm going to do this in marker so you can actually see what I've done. I took and I marked off the bottom line that I have on my container. Okay, so that's the bottom line. I don't want to cut past there. And then the top line, I do have some pieces that are overlapping onto the top. So I made a mark with my pencil and it's very light so that I can see where my pattern's going. I'll just kind of fill in the area. So you can kind of get the idea where that mark is. One thing you have to keep in mind is this is going all the way around so you want a continuous pattern when you get here. So, what I'm doing, I'm thinking about the way the grass grows. I'm overlapping some pieces so I can have some carving opportunities that we'll talk about later. And um, I'm going to darken in, just start sketching with the pencil um, an idea of what, what you want. Um, make sure, I would do this with pencil. I'm doing it with marker so you can see it. But you can see I... I don't, I'm not sure if you can see, but I have done it in pencil. And I was just, you know, messing around, just sketching. Um, and 
I decided what was going to be over, what was going to be under, uh, things like that. So this one's coming up and going over the edge and it's going over other blades of brass. If you're not sure, we do have a pattern that you can follow in the kit. So if that helps you, um, if you want to do your own thing, oh, go for it. This one's going over that blade, so you can kind of see. I just made sure that my lines, wherever I was going over or under in my pattern, you'd be able to see it. Also, I don't know if you can see my pencil marks, but I have some X's going on. So I have an X here. This is the cutout areas. I just put X's just to remind myself in my pattern, because once you start putting this on, and start carving it, it might get a little confusing. So I just do that just to help myself later. This one comes in from the other side. No two will be alike. So you just go ahead and go with your the flow of what you see as your pieces fit together. Okay, so now when I put this together, I have I'm overlapping and you can see my pattern is going to come together. Let me get it together and then I'll hold it up for you. Eh, maybe it's better this way. You can see my pattern is going to come fit together. Okay. You can just take your paper and fold it next to each other. Just fold it right up and make sure as you're continuing your pattern on that you're, you have a solid pattern. All right, next thing I'm going to do is wrap it around here. Now your clay is going to be a little bit bigger. And you're going to take your toothpick and put in, you're just going to go along and make an indention. And it's pressing right into the clay. Now, if you're doing the bigger lantern, we have a larger piece for you, so we have one that fits around that container for you, too. So there's two different patterns, two different kits. You have to specify which one you want. So I'm just going to do this all the way around. Do my axes. You know, as I'm doing this, maybe I'm going to change it up a little bit. Maybe I want some to go up a little higher. It's not. Just because I'm making lines on this clay doesn't mean I can't change them later. Okay. When I take this off, you can see the lines from the pattern that I'm going to follow. So how do I cut this out? Same tool, same toothpick. So I'm going to start. This time when I press the toothpick it's going to go all the way into where I can feel the container. And then I'm just going to take out the extra clay wherever I have my axis. Now this one goes up, remember that line that I put there? It's right there, so I don't want to go over that, so I'm not going to cut around that blade. I'm going to take a look at your pattern. Now this is the, this is the first just a rough cut. Okay. 
we're going to clean everything up. Your pattern is just for placement. Take your time and figure out the pattern. If you're not sure about an area, come back to it. Maybe it'll make more sense later. Or check your pattern. If you have your pattern, you can check also. So as I'm doing this now, you can see I'm leaving that line up there. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We're just going to go in and clean up some of these areas now. You know, maybe I missed a couple spots, like right here. Maybe I clean that up a little bit. Just take a look at it. Make sure it makes sense. And then what I'm going to do is take my sponge and I'm going to smooth out some of the areas so I can see where I'm going with these, the direction. Now down here, I have my cut line here. I want to do the same thing with these, so I'm going to go in and just take that down further just to make it all cohesive. There are a few things you can use to clean this up now. You can use your sponge. I like to start with that to see where I am. You can also come in with a brush. You get your brush wet and come in and clean up the areas. Right now you have your container in still inside the middle so that it's supporting it. It's a good time to come in with the brush and and clean up inside all those areas that you cut out. Now maybe you don't want to be so complicated with your design. So we have some other patterns that you can do. For example, I started this one here and it's a little more simple and maybe if this is your first time cutting out or your first time um, doing carving. So this pattern is just, you still have the top line and the bottom line and I just did a simple, you do a couple of curved areas and dots. And if you do a pattern all the way across it's a little easier to figure out what you want cut out and what you want to leave. So it's easier for a first time carving. The grass can get a little confusing, but it does make an awesome finished product. Okay, I'm just kind of switching back and forth between my sponge and my brush. Clean this up. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to move on, and the next thing that we're going to do is the carving portion. So this is where you decide where you're going under and over your, your grass pieces. So let's take a look, and what I'm going to use again is just my toothpick, and I'm going to determine, like right here, I have this coming up. I'm just going to carve some away.
and you can see my grass, it looks 3D there, or maybe 2D there. So you got two different levels. You get a little 2D effect. Same here, this one comes up. And you're just going to kind of finesse your clay. See how I'm pulling some away in between there? This blade is going over this one, so I'm just going to cut some of that away. So the one that's going over is higher. It's as simple as that. This one that's coming here is going over this piece. So this one goes under, so we take some off there. And on this side. And then you can see this one coming up over the top of it. And you just work your way around the piece determining which one's over and which one's under. I'll do one more so you can get the idea. So this blade is under and this one is over. So take this, pull it away from that piece. Same here. This and go up. You can see how wet my clay is. Again, if your clay is getting dry, just take your squirt bottle, a little squirt bottle, and just spray it, and then it'll be, it'll get wet for you and be easier to work with. Get in there. Pull the clay away. Just pull it right off. And you just keep playing with it till you like the way it looks. This one's the one that's under. Keep working it. And this one, need to put the tip of the grass right there. And then up at the top here, this one's overlapping up here. And then once you have your carving done, you want to take your sponge again sponge and your brush and just come and clean those pieces up. You're going to do your carving all the way around and then clean up all the areas until you like the way it looks. Now let's just say that you have an area where you would like a little more clay uh, maybe it's not showing, maybe the grass isn't high enough for you. Um, mine is okay right here, but I'm just going to show you. Um, you might want to take some extra clay. You're going to score it. And then you can add clay. I get it wet. And add a piece of clay if you need more in an area. See how it just blending that right back into there. And then I, it's a little bit higher now, so I can, I can have it be a, lo a little more 2D effect there. Just in case you need to do that. All right, I'm not going to bore you with all the carving that has to be done on this because there is a lot left, but um, that gives you an idea how to do it. Just take your time, relax, and um, you know, take some deep breaths and go ahead and do it because it doesn't have to be exact. You can always go back and change like, oh, I think I want that piece of grass a little thinner. Then you just come in and just cut some off. Make it the way you want it. Control the clay. To keep your clay, if you get tired of carving and you've had enough for one night, one day, then just go ahead 
and take your plastic, put it, put it in your plastic, and give it a good spray with your spray bottle. I'm going to spray myself. Spray, spray your clay, and then you're going to take this and wrap your piece up. You can take some of your tape and tape around it just to hold it so the next day you can come back in and you can um, you can work on it some more. Uh, it's a lot of work to carve it, so take your time and, and don't rush it. Um, keep your clay wet, and then the next day when you come back to it, I wouldn't wait too long, so the next day when you come back to it, you want to maybe spray it down again and then get started and do some more of your carving. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed with it. Take a break if you need to and just keep uh, carving away. Well, I hope you had a good time carving. I hope it was a relaxing experience. I just wanted to show you a couple more things um, if you're struggling. The popsicle stick works well too if you're coming in and I've already done some carving I want to pull away see how it made a nice a nice indention and a nice smooth larger area that I can clean away okay so don't don't just use the um, toothpick you can use other tools as well hey and if you have something around home that might work that you think um, will be more beneficial to you. There are a lot of tools just in your um, drawer in the kitchen that you can use. So also I wanted to say the end of your paintbrush can come in and get some areas too. You can clean up some of the small little areas and it's a little sturdier than your toothpick. So just some food for thought, other ways of doing things. Okay, um, I would like to show you some embellishments now. I did this area here, it kind of looks like trees. So maybe uh, not doing grass, maybe the another option would be to do some trees. And in that case, you would like to do some leaves to add on to it uh, instead of dragonflies. So first off, we're gonna take our extra clay, just roll it out a little bit, check your thickness like I showed you. And basically just cut some leaves. So I'm going to come in and cut a leaf. This looks like an eye. And put a mark down the middle like that. And clean the edges. If I want it a little thinner, just go ahead and press it. Thinner on the end there. So you have a little depth. Clean it up. And remember your scoring, uh, the same as when we did our seams. You're just going to come in and do a little scoring on your piece and on your leaf. A little bit of water and then press it on. And you can put your leaves wherever you want. Since you're embellishing it later, it's you, you're not carving. You're just embellishing it and putting extra pieces on. Do a couple more leaves just to give you an idea. Just clean it up with my fingers. You can put a ton of these all over if you like. And you get, get an idea what it looks like. Now this is looking like a tree. Okay. A couple other things you can do that are super easy. Um, this is our dragonfly lantern. So we're going to take a ball of clay, just roll it up, and again, if it is not wet enough, if it's cracking at all, go ahead and take your um, water and just get it wet and go again. Okay, so I'm taking some clay, rolling it for my dragonfly, and then I'm going to go back and forth so that it's a nice long piece. And I want these to actually be flat. If something is sticking up too much from your piece, it's going to break in transit. So when you bring it back to um, have it fired, it's just so fragile. So let's make them flat. 
and um, make a head just by kind of squeezing it in and making it. And Dragonfly has a long skinny body. See how I'm just manipulating it with my fingers? I want to make body sections. Just take my toothpick. It's going to need some um, wings. So I'm doing the same thing I did before. And then I'm going to squish it, flatten it up. some water on it. Once it's on, I'm going to squeeze it just a little bit thinner. Up and down. Getting a little dry. You're going to put water. Smash it. I'm just going to kind of squeeze this top one in the middle there. These are very basic. A little dragonfly. And a couple eyes if you want to. And dragonflies have pretty rounded eyes, so we can make little circles. Get them wet and then put them right in that hole. It's going to make a bit of a suction cup for you. Okay, so we have four wings, two sets. I can manipulate, the clay is wet, so I can manipulate if I want it, and I'm just going to place them in the grass. Somewhere in the grass, maybe right over here. Remember your scoring. A little bit of water. And suction cup him right onto there. Press him on there. And then once he's on there, go ahead, He's the clay's still wet, go and hit ahead and manipulate your wings. How you want them? Want them up, down, however you want them. You don't want them sticking out too much because that's be, that will be more fragile. Okay. So just like that, little dragonfly. Uh, another fun thing to do is, and very easy, is a ladybug. So you just take a bit of clay. Make a circle and then just press the circle down so it's flat on one side. Smooth them out. And then take your toothpick once again and just make a line for his head, a line for his wings, two eyes, and a couple of dots. I have I put three on each side. Kind of looks like that. And then do your scoring again. And place him where you want him. A little bit of water. And there's your ladybug. So we have three different options. Or you can do them all if you want. Um, leaves because we had an area that I carved to look like trees instead of grass. Um, then we had in the grass, we have a dragonfly. Of course, you can do several dra dragonflies on your dragonfly lantern um, and a ladybug. All right, the next thing we're gonna move into is painting your lantern. So we have our um, wet piece of clay 
If it is very wet, go ahead and just let it sit for 15 minutes to a half an hour. Take your hand and just make sure the um, container just slides a little bit. We're not taking it completely out. We're just sliding it to make sure you can get it out. Um, and then we're going to start with some colors from your kit. This is all in your kit. Uh, we are going to take, start with the two green colors. And I'm going to show you how to load, double load your brush. Um, we are doing the grass. I'm just going to start over here, the grass. Okay. So be mindful of your carving. So for example, this uh, piece on mine is overlapping this one. So I'm going to start with the one that's underneath. I'm going to put my brush in halfway and then I'm going to switch it and put it in the lighter color halfway. So I have half and half. One corner, one color, one corner, another color. And I'm going to come in and both colors are going to come out at the same time. You can see the light and you can see the dark. Um, I am loading my brush again on the same sides. That's the critical part of this. And then I'm going to hold my brush the same way I did down here, light on the outside, and bring this one all the way through here. Everywhere that it is, um, you can see it's above now the other branches, the other grass blades. Okay, so I'm going to do that so it's pretty thick. You can see, always loading on the correct side. And then I'm going to come in and do the other branches right by it. Come up. You want to be very generous. We're painting on wet clay, so we're being very generous with the color. If you get it on somewhere you don't want it, don't worry. You can wipe it right off. So I just keep working my way around through all the grass. I'm going to paint this bottom part green also to blend with the grass. Where you don't paint is going to be white. Just keep that in mind. Kind of painting, standing on my head here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Being very generous. I'm going on making sure all the sides are painted. Okay, so just make sure that your grass blades that are above have a solid line all the way through. Okay. You're going to let this dry, your paint dry, and then you're going to come back and do one more coat. Ge very generous with your color, with your paint. The trick to this is if you see an area where you want um, more dark green, you just take the dark green and, and add it. This is just getting a base of your two blended colors. Yeah, I'm getting inside you want to get those areas that you carved out or it will be white. I'm just putting the color down here so it will blend in with those blades as they hit the bottom here. We're working with glazes, and the glazes will be very light as you paint right now. And then as we fire them, the glazes actually turn to glass, and they will be nice and shiny, just like glass. Okay. 
Look at your piece from all angles just to make sure you have all the areas that you can see are painted. And we want to do the dragonfly over here. So I'm going to paint the grass around him and then I'm going to come in and, and paint, paint him. When you get the colors on him, he's going to come alive a little bit and kind of give him a little personality. I'm being very generous with my paint because we're only doing two coats. We want it to be bright and shiny. So just be generous. Okay, so that is one coat of the green. I'm going to come in and do my dragonfly for you. I've got some blue green paint. It's a teal color. I'm going to do his body with that. And I'm going to add a little white to it. So I'm kind of just swirling it, just swirling it around and making it multicolor. Kind of almost make it iridescent, like dragonflies are. So I'm doing the blue and then just grabbing a little bit of white and blending it in, almost puddling it. Make sure you get all the sides. I'm going to clean my brush off and then I'm going to go in with white for the leaf for the <laughs> I'm going to go in with white for the wings. So I'm doing white because I want it to be white, bright, bright white. See how I'm just patting the paint on there? The wings are very fragile. Make sure you get the sides. I have a tiny bit of that, whoops, I have a tiny bit of that teal mixed in. Again, it's going to make it a little iridescent. And then I'm going to take my small brush a little bit of black come in and get the eyes again you can see how I'm just dabbing those I just need one coat of black and I just need one coat on the dragon flying wings because of the way I was puddling it or dropping the paint onto the clay okay. the next thing you're going to do is let this dry and go back and do your second coat on your grass. And you're all set. Okay, so after you let your piece dry, the paint is completely dry. It will be light and chalky looking. Um, when you touch it, the paint doesn't come off anymore. You're gonna pull your piece up, turn it over, so you have the clean side of your plastic. Take the container, pull it right out. It just should pull out easily, okay? You wanna do this when your piece is wet. So right after the paint dries, you pull this out, put it aside. You can pull the um, paper towel out if you want. You don't have to, but you can pull that out also. Um, and then remember, this is all dry on your piece. Mine's a little wet, but yours will be dry. Take the corners, pull it up. Take the bag that your kit came in and just place it right in the bag well, nice and gently and you're ready to take it back to the store. and that's our dragonfly lantern again you can order below we have two different size kits just let us know which one you want and we'll be happy to fill that order for you thank you